All right, so we're going to take a look at my editing workflow with the two programs, Adobe Bridge CC, as well as um, Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. Uh, and you guys are probably pretty familiar with that if you're already editing photos. Um, <clears throat> Adobe Bridge is ultimately just a photo management system that I like to use. Um, it allows me to stick with the Adobe platform, but also to make sure that my process is very seamless um, and I can stay within one app. Uh, so the way that I start my workflow is I usually will go to computer here and normally when there's an SD card attached here you'll see all of your external drives as well as your internal drive. Um, when you go into your SD card, right now we'll just use <clears throat> my hard drive as an example. Um, you can go to your folders and you can see your images. Um, once you're actually in the folder where your images are, what I like to do is I like to transfer those images from my SD card right after the shoot um, into my hard drive. So I will go and I would select all, um, which you guys can just use Command A or however you like to select. And then <clears throat> there's an option here for either move to or copy to. Um, move to is obviously you're taking the photos from one location, which is your SD card, and you're moving them to another location, which is going to be the external hard drive, or into your computer or wherever you like to store your files. The other option, copy to, is actually just taking those photos and adding a copy to the location of your choice. I always, again, do move to. You can use this, uh, you can do the same thing through Finder. It's the same thing as dragging and dropping photos, but again, I like to stay within one application so it leaves everything pretty seamless for me. Um, and what you can do is you can choose a folder or you can um, go here to choose folder at the bottom and you can create either a new folder or you can go and you can navigate your drive to find out where that folder is if it's not one of your most re recent folders. Uh, so, Basically, after I've done the move, I've already done it here, so I'm not going to show you guys completely. After I move everything over, I go to that new folder on my hard drive, um, and then I take a look at the photos. Now, right now, you see I have some that are starred with the one star um, as well as the two star. Generally, what I like to do is go through all the photos, and any photos that I look at pretty briefly, and they look like they could possibly be used, I'll give them a one star. So a photo like this, you give it a one star. If you see in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, you can see what rating you gave it. Now, Adobe Bridge is similar to Lightroom. It allows you to rate your photos for the most part through one through five. There are other ways you can label them. Again, I use the one star rating. That way I know, okay, this is an image that by first glance, it looks like it can be used. And then I'll just cycle through. Um, some of them I gave a two, some of them I gave a one. Now the way that I personally use the two and three ratings is a two is, this is a great image. I'm probably going to either send this to the client or use this initially for Instagram. Um, those photos, I usually give a two rating. Um, or if I have a really, really great photo that stands out, I'll even give it a three rating. Um, and we'll go ahead, and I believe this one, we're going to give it a three. All right. Um, and so what happens is when you go in the top right-hand corner over here where you see the star, you can actually click the drop down, and you get two filter them by unrated, rejected, or you can filter them by the stars. Uh, what I like to do is go to one or more stars. I'll cycle through all of the photos that I've given a one, and then I'll actually pick out the ones that look good. There's no blur, anything like that. The lighting is decent, etc. I'll give those a two. And again, if it's really, really great, I'll give it a three. Most of my photos, um, whether it be lifestyle, or whether it be sports photography, I'm usually posting them on Instagram. And so my two and three star ratings are usually the ones that, again, are going to be posted to Instagram right away so that I at least have some content. And then I'll go back and I'll go through the one stars um, and, and figure out if there's more photos that I can pull out of that. So when you have your photos uh, basically starred, what you can do is, again, go to your filter. This is what I do. So we'll just take this one. And I'll actually go grab another just so I have two photos. Uh, let's go with this one. We'll give that a three. Um, 
I'll go through, I'll select all of those, and then I'll drag and drop right onto the Lightroom icon. What happens then is it brings up the import tool in Lightroom um, where you see your two photos are highlighted. It shows the entire folder kind of in a light box. And then the very important thing you want to look at at the top is add. So by me selecting add, it means that I get to leave the original photos in their location on my hard drive, but I still add them to my catalog in Lightroom. This is extremely important, especially if you're focusing again on organization, um, photo management, you're not trying to take up a bunch of space everywhere. If you do copy, then obviously you have the photo located somewhere and then you also bring it over into Lightroom. Again, these things are kind of your preference, but I'm just showing you guys what I like to do within my workflow. Now next, over the right here, um, I just kind of keep this stuff uh, to what the presets are already are for me, which is minimal previews, um, don't import duplicates, etc. Uh, but this here at the bottom is what I like to use most importantly and most often. Um, if you look at develop settings, there's a drop down. These are all my presets uh, that I have built into the computer. And then my favorites are the ones that I use for basketball. If I wanted to import these photos with a preset already attached to it, I could. Um, I'm not going to do that now, but that's something that's very important, especially for my workflow when I'm editing a ton of photos. Um, and what's really cool is obviously if you edit one or two photos from a shoot and then there's more that you want to bring over, you kind of have that preset already set, then you can import the rest of the photos you're going to edit with that already set and then you can go in and manipulate more. But here is the metadata as well. Um, <clears throat> the metadata is extremely important for copyright. So if you want to put in who the photographer was, the company, um, if there's any brief information that you have about yourself or your photos, um, all that stuff gets attached to the metadata. I can import that with the photos that I'm bringing in. So let's go ahead and import. Okay, so now that the two photos are here, I can go in. I have my two photos. All right, so we're going to go over to the top right here, and we can go to the Develop tab. Um, again, on the left side, all of my presets. I've saved my f basketball presets over here on the left. You can see the different ones. I don't know if any of these kind of look familiar, but they're already here so that I can use those if I want. Um, the other thing that you can do is if you go to your library and you go to all your photographs, if there's a photo that you really like and you want to transfer that over, um, you can right click, you can go to develop settings, you can copy settings. That will bring up all of the different settings that you have uh, attached to this photo. You can select all, you can um, select individuals. I usually leave everything selected except for the crop and except for spot removal. Um, also, I usually uncheck local adjustments like filters and brush tools, etc. cetera. Uh, but the rest of this stuff, you can kind of feel comfortable bringing it over. Again, you want to go through and figure out what's going to work for you. Everybody is different. So let's say I were to copy that. Um, if I go back to the previous import, which were the last two photos I brought over, I can come to this this photo and I can paste the settings. Obviously, I'm not going to go with this look. It doesn't really look that good, but that's another way of being able to easily um, edit your photos uh, without also having a preset. You actually can just come over and copy the look and feel of another photo. So I'm going to just go ahead and delete that. Um, let's just use one of my presets here. That way you kind of get an idea of what this workflow is like. So I have an epic look, pretty cool, works pretty well with this. Um, the first thing I like to do is figure out if this is just going to be a photo that gets posted on my story or if this is a photo that gets posted as an actual Instagram post on my feed. Um, if it's a story post, then I come over here, go to aspect, we'll go to 16-9 uh, ratio, we can use that. Um, if it is a photo that's going to go on my feed, then 4-5 ratio, right? And it's very important to take a look at how this is going to look within the composition of 4-5 ratio 
this really dictates how you're going to crop the photo. And this is exactly why for me, when I'm actually shooting, I keep Instagram in mind as the final medium for me uh, because that does dictate how close or how far away you will actually take the original photo. Um, so this one, we'll just go back to 16-9 ratio. We'll go ahead and post this on the story. Cool, that looks good. We'll crop it there. Um, <clears throat> quick tip for those who may or may not know, uh, maybe beginning photographers, uh, if you actually look at the lines here, this is all broken up by what's called the golden ratio. But basically what you want to try to do is get a, a point of a focal point on one of these corners here. Or you can place like a horizon line of a photo on one of these two lines. Um, so this is a cool way that you can kind of line up your shots to change the composition. Uh, it's kind of boring when you just put an object or a person in the middle of the frame. So you can actually play around with um, these points here and it actually changes the dynamic of the photo. So I'm, I'm actually going to move this. So I'm actually going to move this to the left here. So you can actually see the ball is the focal point here. And then, you know, you're looking at him. Um, this also allows you to kind of stay within the page. So boom, or stay within the photo. I'm sorry. <clears throat> All right. So this is going to end up being on the story. Again, we've already used a preset, so it's pretty much well edited already. Um, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and at the top here, we'll go over and we'll do auto tone. Auto tone is cool because basically it automatically sets your exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks um, for you automatically. Uh, I always do this regardless of whether I use a preset or not because then I can go in and edit and I can also check to see if the lighting is good. Um, this is very helpful for over or underexposed images, which I can talk about in a later tutorial. Um, yeah, so with this, if we look at his skin, it looks a little pink. So if I want to go ahead and change that, what I can do is go to HSL, which is Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. And what I could do if I want to check the hue, I like to actually click this button here, which allows me to go directly to that color. And I can shift it. And you see it's also affecting the ball. So I'm actually going to undo that. Same thing with Saturation. You can click that. Kind of play around with it. And then same thing for luminance. You can kind of adjust that there. He kind of looks a little washed out. So what we could do is bring the highlights down a little bit. And again, I'm not like a master editing person, so this may or may not look great. <laughs> but at least you kind of get an idea of how this works. Um, if you want to adjust the darks and lights, you can. Obviously, the darker you go, to me, it gives more of a dramatic kind of look and feel. Um, but obviously, the darker you go, the more you lose the detail in the blacks. So kind of finding... a good space for that. I'm actually going to bring it up so it gives it more of this matte kind of look to it. You can also adjust <clears throat> the actual curve itself. Again, I'm not going to go into everything, but that's something you can do. Clarity. You can mess around with that. I'm just going to leave it where it was. Um, if you want to go ahead and adjust more of the colors, you can down here in calibration as well. Shift this and see what happens. Again, it's kind of just playing around with it. Um, everybody's going to have a different workflow. I'm not going to give you guys everything that I do, but um, just kind of prepping your shot so that it looks good. <clears throat> um, a lot of my presets automatically have the white balance set. So, I mean, you can adjust that as you think it looks good.
I think that looks a little bit more natural. This kind of gives it, this blue gives it a little bit more of an edge or the more cool temperature. Um, but again, it's all finding your balance and what it is that you're trying to convey to your audience, whether it be through social media, uh, your personal portfolio, whatever it is that you're posting your photos on or sharing your photos with. So we're going to go ahead and make that look a little bit more natural. All right. <clears throat> After that is done, take one last look, see if there's anything I can adjust. Um, if you want to adjust the vignette, you can. I'm going to leave it where it was. Um, you can also change that depending on the lens you shot with, etc. You can also change that depending on the lens you shot with. You can go into lens correction and adjust for that. <clears throat> We're not going to do that. Again, this is just kind of a simple edit. Realize too that most of your photos, if they are going on social media, <clears throat> they are going to most often be seen on a very small screen. So a lot of these things won't even get noticed. Um, but yeah, that's just like a brief overview of my workflow, importing uh, my images, getting them to the hard drive, coming in, editing in <clears throat> Lightroom, and then the final thing is the export. So if you go to File, Export, um, what you could do is choose where it's going to go, or you can go to same folder as original photo. So I already have a folder with this photo in it, I'll send it there. You can go down here and rename it. I'll just name it Dreamer Shoot. And then you can choose the extensions being lowercase. You can change custom name, file number, etc. I'm just going to leave it as that for now. Quality and all those things. I leave all this stuff already set. Um, metadata, I'm going to include all of that. Again, that's your name, company, etc. Um, you can save the camera info, any edits in Lightroom get saved. Uh, you really can do a lot with that. And then watermark. So I have, for those of you who know, I have my DAH Media logo that usually goes in the bottom right down here. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and attach that and click export. The top left, you can see the status on that. We'll go ahead we'll go and we'll find that photo so I'll go to my hard drive we'll go to photography we'll go to dreamer shoot and there's my photo so cool and you guys see the logo on the bottom right hand corner all right so that's just a brief overview of my photography workflow if you guys have any questions feel free to leave a comment below um, or you can reach out to me via email. I'll go ahead and leave that in the description. All right.